isn't Gabriel either, kiddies. <laughs> Show with Fred Kent, Edgar Bergen, and Charlie McCarthy. Horton Hopper, Minerva Pius as Mrs. Nussbaum, the DeMarco sisters, and Al Goodman and his orchestra. And if anybody cares who I am, my name is Kenny Delmar. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, since the war ended, we've all been waiting for the return of the things we've missed. Tonight we bring you one of the things nobody's missed, and here he is, Fred Allen. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Kenny, I've been away from radio quite a long time. I guess everything has changed. No, Fred, uh, things in radio are about the same. Oh, really? About the same? Have they found out who the mystery chef is yet? <laughs> no. They haven't. How about one man's family? Have there been any uh, additions to this one? No, Fred. What about Portia? Has uh, she turned around yet? <laughs> no. Portia is still facing life. In a rush, huh? Say, tell me, uh, Kenny, is that... <laughs> Is that old gentleman still on the air every week? You know the old fellow with the... Oh, uh... you mean uh, just plain Bill? No, Bill wasn't his name. Mm. Uh, Pa Perkins? No, not Pa Perkins. Singing Sam? No, not Singing Sam. You're warm, though. This old guy... This old guy had a valet named Manchester or Portchester. <laughs> Been away so long. Oh, you mean Jack Benny? Jack Benny, the octogenarian. <laughs> and how he can play it. He's the guy. <laughs> is he? Is he still on the? Oh, air? yes. It's remarkable what those one-a-day vitamins can do. <laughs> a guy his age. Yes. Yeah, well, all. is Jack old? Is he old? A friend of mine saw Mr. Benny in swimming this summer. He thought that Benny was wearing a blue corduroy suit. <laughs> And it, uh, it wasn't a blue corduroy suit. No. Benny is so old now, his veins are outside of his skin. <laughs> his face has more wrinkles than a seer sucker suit on a clothes. <laughs> Almost didn't get that out. Is he, is he really... Portland, how did you? I heard you singing as the program opened. Off for good. How did you? How did you sense I was back on the air again? Mama heard a rumor. You know how fast bad news travels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Uh, what's new, Portland? I thought you might need some new jokes for your program. Well, don't tell me that you have contrived some specimens of waggery. Did you hear about the soldier who ate five dozen oysters and got discharged from the army? Ate five dozen oysters and got discharged from the army? Yes. He had 60 blue points. <laughs> oh, fine. It wouldn't work with, with uh, clans, would it? But, uh... <laughs> You know, that joke sounds like something off the bottom of Can You Top This? Since the atomic bomb fell on Japan, the emperor doesn't wear a crown. No, what does the emperor wear? An atom hat. An atom hat. <laughs> you should put dry ice on that joke instantly, for it. It won't keep a minute. <laughs> and speaking of minutes, any minute we'll be leaving now for Alan's Alley. Oh, what is your question tonight? Well, one of the greatest problems facing the country today, of course, is housing. Here in New York City, thousands of people are looking for places to live. And so our question is, how is the housing shortage affecting you? Shall we go? As one B-29 said to the other, let's take off. <laughs> ah, Paula, it sure is good to be back down here in Allen's Alley. I the same people still live here. Well, there's only one way to find out. I'll knock at this first door again. Somebody, I say, somebody knock. <laughs> uh, who was it? Uh, pardon me, mister. Senator Claghorn's the name. Claghorn, that is. Senator Claghorn? Uh, I'm from the south, uh, the deep south. From way down south. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm so far down south that my family's treading water in the Gulf Stream. <laughs> South, isn't it? Yeah, where I live, we call the people from Alabama Yankees. (laughs) 
Well, I don't. Now, know. don't butt in when the body's talking, son. Try listening. <laughs> Hey, if I listen, and you're bound to learn something. Well, look, Senator. Anything gets me down, it's two people trying to talk at the same time. Well, I know that. I got the floor, son. Don't try no syllable. <laughs> now, look, Senator. What about the housing shortage down there in Washington? I stop at a hotel. Oh, you actually have a room? What room? You mean, uh... For $20 a day, they give me a chair in the lobby and a sleeping pill. <laughs> pill, that is. <laughs> What is the housing problem coming to, Senator? Uh, there's only... I say, there's only one solution. And that is? Close up the OPA. Well, what will happen if we close the OPA? There'll be millions of ceilings left over. Yes? You put four walls under them ceilings, you got houses. <laughs> so long, son. So long, that is. <laughs> You know, I think the senator's got something there. Got something there. <laughs> I, uh, I wonder what a knock at this next door will bring. Howdy, bub. Oh. <laughs> You're, uh... Titus Moody's my name. Titus Moody? Moody by name, Moody by nature. Well... <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Moody, has the housing shortage bothered you any? Yeah, that's why I had to leave the farm, Bob. Really? Yeah. The land was so poor, you'd have to use 20 sacks of fertilizer to raise a tune on it. <laughs> Gosh. Cows were so weak, they used to travel in pairs. The cows had to travel in pairs? Yeah. Took two cows to pull up a blade of grass. <laughs> the uh, land was dry, was it? Dry. I didn't see no water for 20 years. 20 years? One day it rained. Yes? When the first drop of water hit me, I fainted. Yes? Yeah, they had to throw two buckets of dust in my face to bring me to. <laughs> Gosh, uh, how, did you, uh, how did you cope with the housing problem, Titus? Why, well, I, I ordered one of them two-room houses from Sears Roebuck, but it didn't help. You mean when Sears Roebuck delivered the two-room two room house? Sears was living in the front room, and Roebuck was living in the back. Oh, Roebuck. Well, if I... <laughs> if farmers can't find houses, I guess traveling salesmen will just have to keep on traveling. And that brings us to another door. No? Oh, Mrs. Nussbaum. You were expecting maybe Emperor Shapiro Hito? <laughs> tell me. <laughs> tell me, Mrs. Nussbaum, how do you... How do you feel about the housing shortage? Thanks to the housing shortage, today, Pansy Nussbaum is enjoying connubial bliss, if you... <laughs> pardon the expression. Yes, <laughs> Well, what happened? What happened, Mrs. Ann? It's flocking to my house relatives. Relatives? Blood relatives. Relatives without blood. <laughs> Say, you must have a full house. Full. And the couch is sleeping two rapports, cousins. Uh-huh. And the dining room table is sleeping four Weinsteins. All four of them on one table? They are half brothers. This is making only two. Oh, well. <laughs> I see. In the bathtub is sleeping Ben Schwartz, an uncle. Mm-hmm. And top Uncle Ben is the little Pinker's boy. <laughs> he is floating on the water. Oh. <laughs> the Pinker's uh, boy is a good swimmer? A human stature. Oh, really? <laughs> well, tell me, Mrs. Nussbaum, with all your relatives jamming the house, didn't your husband get mad? Mad? One morning, Pierre is putting on his beret. <laughs> he is taking his Molly Pecan record. Took his Pecan record with him, huh? And he is stamping out. Your husband left you? For two weeks, I am a widow. Well, what happened? One night, is coming on the door and knocking. Bit a pack, bit a pack. Bit a pack. <laughs> Your husband? My Pierre is back. Oh, it was true love. Pierre couldn't live without you. Love, Schmuck, Pierre couldn't find a room. <laughs> well, here we are near the 
near the end of the alley. I wonder who lives here. Hello, hello. We're here to say hello. Now, how do you do? Not Polly Boo, but just hello. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Look. <laughs> but just a minute. Who are you, boy? We're the Gee and the Gee. We're songwriters. What songs have you written? Have you heard? We're looking for the guy that began the beginning to see if we can get him to stop it. <laughs> no. Have you heard? When my baby smiled at me, I wish she'd put in her teeth. <laughs> Please. Tonight, it so happens, we're discussing the housing shortage. We just wrote a housing shortage song. A housing song? How does it go? Hit it, Jim. The situation's serious. It may get worse by spring. We need a housing shortage. And that is why we sing. East side, west side, all around Broadway. You can find a place to live no matter what you pay. Hotels and apartments are crowded everywhere you walk. If it gets any worse, we'll all be sleeping on the sidewalk of New York. Thank you very much, Mr. And now, ladies and gentlemen, meet the DeMarco sisters, five talented youngsters we are happy to welcome as a regular feature on our program. Tonight they sing for you, It's Gotta Be This or That, girl. If you ain't wrong, you're right. If it ain't dark, it's light. If you ain't sure, you might. Gotta be this or that. If it ain't full, then it's right. If you don't stay. Goodman and his orchestra have just played June is busting out a little bit. <laughs> there wasn't time enough for June to bust out all over. And now, uh, what's the trouble, Portland? You look bewildered. Well, I was just wondering, how did you get back into radio, Mr. Allen? How did I get back? You didn't work for a year. Didn't work? Why, last year I was the backbone of Radio Portland incognito. For two months, I filled in when Bulldog Drummond had distemper. <laughs> I can thank only one person for this job, Portland. Charlie McCarthy. Charlie McCarthy? Uh Uh-huh. I heard the orchestra playing Edgar's theme song. (laughs) On my way out, I heard voices. Somebody arguing in one of the dressing rooms. Well, I put my ear to the keyhole. It was Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Edgar was saying... That's the last straw, Charlie. I'll keep your shirt on, Bergen. Why, Charlie, the idea of you leaving me to go with Fred Allen, why, that's ridiculous. Yeah? Yes. Oh, yeah? Yeah. This is my reward after I've given you the best years of my life. Well, at your age, you should be glad to unload those years on anybody. (laughs) What has Fred Allen got that I haven't got? Nothing. But he spends a little of it once in a while. (laughs) Well, if you think Alan pays higher wages, you're sadly mistaken. His program went off the air because Pellagra broke out among his cats. (laughs) Alan isn't hiring me, Bergen. I'm hiring Alan. Oh, I see. If 
If anybody's going to be underpaid, I will do the underpaid. <laughs> so you're going to have your own show. You heard me. Your ears don't lap over it. Now, wait a <laughs> Why, you little whippersnapper, you... Ah, uh, your father's nice to know that. <laughs> What happened then, Mr. Allen? Well, I knew Charlie McCarthy was in the dressing room alone, so I opened the door. Mr. McCarthy? Mr. McCarthy? It's no use crawling back, Bergen. Oh, it's you, Fred Allen. Yes. Well, you're just a man I want to see. Say, I heard the argument, Mr. McCarthy. What's, uh, what's on your mind? Well, you need a job. I need a partner. What are we waiting for? But, Mr. McCarthy, Edgar's my friend. Friend? <laughs> Do you know what Bergen's been saying about you? Well, no. Bergen said you were so cheap that when you brought a pint of blood to the Red Cross, you made him give you a deposit on the bottle. <laughs> I'm cheap. Why, Bergen, with that pot belly? He only raised that abdominal bulb so he could keep his pants up without having to buy suspenders. <laughs> oh, Alan, you look better to me every minute. Boy, well, I went through with that cheapskate. Why, Bergen... <laughs> Bergen is tighter than the top olive in a bottle. He is over penurious, I sometimes uh, say. I like the word. I don't know what it means, but I... <laughs> I can break it up. You might understand part of it. <laughs> I like it better. Uh, those, those ready-to-wear suits he'd buy with two pair of pants. Then he'd have a tailor to make me a suit. Oh, your suits were tailor-made. Yeah, out of the second pair of pants, yeah. You mean that suit you have on now was once a pair of Bergen's pants? Well, look at the coat. The lapels have cuffs on them. <laughs> lapels with cuffs, yeah. Sarah. And all my coats have zippers down the back. <laughs> But, Mr. McCarthy, if we team up, can, uh, do you think we can get any work? Stick with me, Alan, and we'll go places in radio. Oh, Mr. McCarthy. <laughs> oh, come, come. Stop licking my hand. <laughs> with you, Mr. McCarthy, will I get laughs? Uh, well, uh, Charlie knows the sponsor, and uh, Charlie gets the laugh. But, Mr. McCarthy, all my life I've been a comedian. I've gotten laughs. If Henry Kaiser can reconvert, so can you. <laughs> yes, sir, I promise not to get any laughs. Yes. When I started with Bergen, he promised not to get any laughs, too. Oh, really? Yes, and that's, that's the only promise he ever kept. <laughs> well, now that that's all settled, is there... Is there anything else, Charlie? Well, I... Uh... Charlie? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. McCarthy. It was a slip, honest, Mr. McCarthy. I didn't mean I, I, just, I just lost my head there for a second. It's quite all right. It's quite all right. I'm I'm not a snob, you understand. Uh, but I am the star of the program. Yes, sir. Yes. And between the star and the stooge, certain class distinctions must be observed. <laughs> yes, master. I shall remember. I'll be on your knee, it's true, but uh, that's as far as the intimacy will go. I understand. I'm the stooge, and I shall keep my place, sir. That's better. It's nothing personal, you know, but this is radio, you see. It's dog-eat-dog. Dog. I know, sir. Yes. And I've just finished eating that Mexican hairless burger. <laughs> Sir, I give you a toast to the new Charlie McCarthy show. Good. McCarthy marches on. Well, Portland, Charlie and I rehearsed our act all the next morning, and about 2 o'clock that afternoon... Okay, I'll write down your name. Which one is Pick and which is Pat? <laughs> This will cost you your job, young lady. Miss Silver, Miss Silver, I'm a busy man. Yes, Mr. Lester. Call a conference. Get all my vice presidents here in my office immediately. Yes, sir. Yes, and when they get here, cancel the conference. Tell them I'm a busy man. Yes, sir. Uh, where's, uh, where's my portable desk? It's supposed to be wheeled around in front of me. Hand me a desk, somebody. I'm a busy man. Uh, hello, Mr. Leaf. Yeah, Miss Cooper, who are these people? Yes. Mr. Leaf, don't you remember me? Who said that? Who's talking? It's me. I'm down here. Oh. Yeah, about that radio job, you know? Sorry, Mayor LaGuardia. We're full up on news, <laughs> 
Mr. Lee's, you remember me, Charlie McCarthy. McCarthy, McCarthy. Oh, yes, yeah. I met you with Edgar Bergen. Yeah, yes, sir. Bergen, what a comedian. If you're with Bergen, it's a deal. Miss Cooper, give this boy a contract. I'm a busy man. Yeah, Mr. Lee. Yeah, yes? I'm not exactly working with Bergen on this show. No, Bergen, no contract. Pull these tramps out. Yeah. Uh, but we've got a we've got a great act, sir. Yeah, Mr. Lee, give us a chance. Out of my way, I'm a busy man. Miss Cooper, I'm on my way someplace. Where am I going? <laughs> Listen to auditions for your radio program. Oh, yes, yes. I love to audition actors. Hand me my gun. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> clear the way, clear the way. Stand back, everybody. I'm a busy man. Where's the door? Oh, here. I'm off. Gad, he is a busy man. <laughs> Darn that closet. Where's the door? <laughs> oh, here. I'm off. Come on, Alan. We'll do an audition, too, huh? Great. Here's the audition room. Quiet, Mr. Leaf has stopped me audition. All right, all right, let's go. I'm a busy man. Start singing, you. Kiss me again. Kiss me. <laughs> Who's next? The three five six sisters. Get going, girls. Do you hear that whistle down the line? I'm the acting speaker. In Santa Fe. Are you ready, Mr. McCarthy? Yeah, but, uh, you know, I've been thinking, suppose we change the act a bit. You sit on my knee in front of me, huh? <laughs> no, you're the star, Mr. McCarthy. You sit in front the way we rehearsed it. Yeah. Next, who's holding up the audition? I'm a busy man. Uh, is your voice ready, Alan? Okay. Remember, keep weaving so he can't draw a steady bead. <laughs> Let's go, Mr. McCarthy. We're Alan and McCarthy. We're the life of every party. We'll cheer you folks with quips and jokes. It sure will make you laugh. Ha, ha. And if you want a song with us, you can't go wrong. By the light of the silvery moon. We're Alan and McCarthy. Say, Fred, my girl can't wear liquid stockings. Well, why can't your girl wear liquid stockings, Mr. McCarthy? Because she can't get her leg in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> We're Alan and McCarthy. We're the life of everybody. Stop, 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 stop Fred. The gun must have jammed. <laughs> Hey, aren't you Fred Allen? Uh, yes, sir. I need a man like you to take over my program. I'll call it the Fred Allen Show. Name your own price. I'm a busy man. Is it a deal, Allen? Yeah, well, what about me here, Mr. Allen? Uh, yes, what about my partner? The little guy is out. He has no talent. I'm a busy man. Goodbye. <laughs> At last, back on the air. Yeah. The yeah. Fred Allen Show. Yeah. Gosh, I'd better phone Portland and Al Goodman and call up the yeah, other. Yeah, we really put it over, didn't we, partner? Partner? Yes. Yeah. You heard what Mr. Leaf said? Huh? Scram, small fry. Now, 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 look, Fred, now. Fred? I'm sorry, Mr. Allen. I... <laughs> yeah, I've decided maybe we should sort of co-star on the show. Co-star on the Fred Allen show? You know radio. It's dog eat dog. Yeah, but Mr. Allen... Meet it before I throw a termite on you. Yeah. <laughs> but kind sir, sir, I... I'm not going to leave you here. I... No, I'm not going to leave you here. Here's your car fare home. The nickel. So long. Yeah. yeah. A nickel. What did I step into this time? A nickel. There's only one thing I can do with a nickel. Oh, well. Let's go, my car. Hello? Mr. Bergen? Guess who this is? <laughs> yeah, now, 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 wait a minute, Bergen. No, but you got to take me back. Now, please. Yeah. yeah. Well, I work for 50 cents a week. Uh, 25? I work for nothing. I'll be, I'll pay you. I'll be your slave, Bergen. Listen, if you'll only take me back this one time. <laughs> 